The following film is the video portion of an E64 lesson. E64 is the computerized curriculum designed for home schools, Christian schools, family worship, Sunday schools, and church Bible study groups. The software contains many features, including family worship, music, competition builder, computer supervised lesson plans, and more. Let me tell you a little story about a man named Andrew Jackson. Born in the Carolinas on March 15, 1767, he would become the only president to pay off the national debt. At 13, he joined the militia as a courier during the Revolutionary War. He was captured by the British, where he contracted smallpox and nearly starved to death. By the age of 14, Andrew was the only surviving member of his family. Jackson served in Congress and helped shape the modern Democratic Party. He was also a lawyer, politician, farmer, and military commander. In 1794, he married Rachel Donaldson Robarts. In 1828, Andrew Jackson was elected as the nation's seventh president. Sadly, his wife died two weeks after the election due to a heart attack. His claim to fame was his command of American forces to victory in the Battle of New Orleans. Jackson was also the first president to survive an assassination attempt. Today, many counties and cities bear his name, as well as a U.S. Army base and nuclear submarine. His face is also on the $20 bill. On June 8, 1845, Andrew Jackson died at his home in Tennessee at the age of 78. And there you go, a little story about a man named Andrew. Let me tell you a little story about a man named Martin Van Buren. Born in New York on December 5th, 1782, he would become the first president not born of British descent, but Dutch. At 14 years old, he began his career studying law. At 24, he married his childhood sweetheart, Hannah Hose, and together raised five children. Sadly, after only 12 years of marriage, Hannah died of tuberculosis. Martin served as the governor of New York for only two months before he was appointed to President Andrew Jackson's cabinet. He also served as a U.S. Senator, Attorney General, Secretary of State, Vice President, and in 1837, he was elected as the nation's eighth president. Martin was the first president to be born an American citizen and the only one to speak English as a second language as he grew up speaking Dutch. He was the third president to serve one term, though he ran two more times, and first to sit down for an interview with a reporter. On July 24, 1862, Martin Van Buren died in his home in New York at the age of 79. And there you go, a little story about a man named Martin. Let me tell you a little story about a man named William Henry Harrison. Born on February 9th, 1773, he would become the last president born as a British subject. In 1790, he began attending the University of Pennsylvania, where he studied medicine under Benjamin Rush. Following his father's death, William joined the army at 18. At 22, he married Anna Symes and together raised 10 children. He found comfort in political life, where he came to fame as the man who led U.S. forces against the Indians at the Battle of Tippecanoe. He served as a major general, congressman, senator, and governor. In 1840, William Henry Harrison was elected as the nation's ninth president, becoming the oldest president elected at 68 until Ronald Reagan 140 years later. On March 4, 1841, he delivered the longest inaugural address in U.S. history, two hours in the freezing rain. A month later, on April 4th, Harrison died of pneumonia, becoming the first president to die in office. It was also the shortest term ever served by a president. Following his death, William's widow was given $25,000 and the right to mail letters free of charge. Harrison's grandson, Benjamin Harrison, became America's 23rd president. And there you go, a little story about a man named William. Let me tell you a little story about a man named John Tyler. 
Born on March 29, 1790, he would become the first president to be born after the adoption of the Constitution. Raised within a successful family, Tyler received a great education and graduated from college at the age of 17. He served as a lawyer, congressman, senator, and governor. In 1840, he became the nation's 10th vice president, running alongside William Henry Harrison. After only one month in office, President Harrison died of pneumonia. On June 1, 1841, Congress declared John Tyler the 10th president of the United States, becoming the first vice president to succeed the presidency. The incident eventually led to the creation of the 25th Amendment. Tyler's most significant accomplishment as president was the adoption of Texas into the Union. He was married twice and had 15 children. His first wife died in the White House. Soon after, he was married again, becoming the first president to be married while in office. John is also the first president to have a veto overridden by Congress and first to have impeachment proceedings brought against him following an unpopular veto. On January 18, 1862, John Tyler died in Richmond, Virginia at the age of 71. He is the only president in history not to be officially mourned in Washington due to his allegiance to the Confederacy. And there you go, a little story about a man named John. Let me tell you a little story about a man named James Polk. Born in North Carolina November 2nd, 1795, scholars would call him one of the nation's greatest presidents. A bright student, he attended college at the University of North Carolina. During his 20s, James joined the militia, reaching the rank of colonel. He served as a lawyer, congressman, governor, and is the only president to have served as Speaker of the House. At 28, Pope married Sarah Childress, who became an active member in his campaigns and helped write speeches. In 1844, at the age of 49, James was elected as the nation's 11th president, becoming the youngest president till that time. While he promised to serve only one term in office, he accomplished much victory during the Mexican-American War and the creation of the Department of Interior. Polk also oversaw the launch of the U.S. Naval Academy, Smithsonian, Washington Monument, and the first postage stamp. On June 15, 1849, at the age of 53, James Polk died of cholera at his home in Nashville, Tennessee, just three months after leaving the White House. And there you go, a little story about a man named James. Let me tell you a little story about a man named Zachary Taylor. Born in Virginia on November 24, 1784, he was raised as a member of a very prominent family. In fact, his family tree consists of James Madison, Franklin Roosevelt, and Robert E. Lee. While he grew up on a farm, his schooling came from tutors, though he was reportedly a poor student. At 23, he joined the army, where he rose in the ranks, thanks to his hard work and some family ties. Three years later, he married Margaret Smith and together raised six children. Known as Old Rough and Ready, Taylor served in the U.S. Army for 40 years, reaching the rank of Major General. His fame was compared to that of George Washington and Andrew Jackson after leading troops to victory in the Mexican-American War. Despite never having served in political office, in 1848, Zachary Taylor was elected as the nation's 12th president. Oddly, it was also his first time ever voting. He is known as the last president to hold slaves while in office and last Whig to win a presidential election. On July 9, 1850, Zachary Taylor died from a stomach flu at the age of 65. He was just 16 months into his presidential term, making it the third shortest tenure in presidential history. And there you go, a little story about a man named Zachary. We are pioneers, adventurers. We are treasonous rebels. We are inventive. We are victorious. We are out of this world. We are equal. We are kind. We are Americans. We do not need to be led. We lead. Knowledge is power. Be empowered. Freedomproject.com The film you have just watched is the video portion of an E64 lesson. 
E64 is the software curriculum that provides education with a strong biblical worldview. And now, here's Bethany to show you how E64 helps my wife, Jacqueline, plan for some special times to focus on important tasks and still manage the children's education. Hi, my name is Bethany, and this is my mother, Jacqueline. Tell us what you're doing today, Mom. I'm working in the office today. I have about four hours worth of work to do to finish up our income taxes for the year and get them in the mail. And since the children are a great interruption to that process, making it virtually impossible to finish, Maddie is going to be supervising their schoolwork today for me, and they're all forbidden to come in the office. <laughs> <laughs> so the children are on their own. What are they doing? Does today have to be a non-school day? Not at all, because we use E64. Let's start in the den and see what the children are doing. We have three laptop computers set up here in the den. Let's visit with Sutara first. Hi, Sutara. Why don't you tell us what you're working on today? I'm working on E64 math. Wow. So what other things can you do with E64? English, history, science, and Bible studies. That's neat. So, how do you know what lesson you're supposed to be working on? I don't have to know. I just log in with my name, and the program goes right to the lesson where I'm supposed to be. And if I stop in the middle of a lesson, when I sign back in, it remembers where I was. That's great. Let's go take a look at what Madison and Gavido are doing. Hi, boys. What are you all working on today? Learning to read. What are you reading about? No, I'm the ark. It's so cool. Look, here's all the animals coming out of the ark. That is cool. Let's go see what Madara is working on. Hi, Madi. I see you're doing your E64 schoolwork. What are you studying? Today I'm learning about how to care for babies and infants. Aw, that sounds so exciting. What else will you do today? Today is Mom's bill paying day, so in addition to my own schoolwork, it's my job to see that the children do their chores and their schoolwork. There are not enough computers for everybody. So while Joshua is doing his E64, I'll have Yedek working on his chores. After about an hour, I'll have them swap out. I do the same thing with Armand and Satara. How do you know what each child needs to be working on? Mom has chore cards she makes for each one of the children. So I just have to read their card to know what chores they are supposed to do. And she has already made their lesson plan for E64. So I just follow the lesson plan for each child. The computer keeps track of their schoolwork. All I have to do is make sure they are working and not being idle. How do you do that? That's easy. Watch this. If I press F3, it comes up with a daily record showing everything I've done today, including the times. So from time to time, I just go around, look at the daily record for each of the children. I can see everything he or she has done or not done, as the case may be. Thank you, Maddie. Let's go see what's going on in the great room. Here we have Armand. What are you working on today, Armand? Right now I'm working for Wally, building question sets for just the Bible. Wally makes the videos and I do the question sets. That's interesting. What else will you be doing today? I will have to do my E64 lessons. What kind of lessons? Math, English, history, science, and Bible studies. Thank you so much, Armand. Now let's go see what Wally's doing. Hi, Wally. What are you working on? I'm working on creating the video for the next lesson in Mom's Learning to Read lesson series. Wow. Will you be doing anything else today? Yes, I'm going to be working on my E64 lessons. Thank you, Wally. And now, we see how Jacqueline can keep the children on track with their schoolwork and still have time to get her important paperwork done. The key is the lesson plan feature of E64. Because she has designed lesson plans for each of the children, E64 will provide the instruction with very little intervention needed by a teacher. A third feature is the family worship mode, which is ideal for family worship, 
school chapel services, family Sunday school classes, or church Bible study groups. Once you set up your lesson plan, this mode offers instruction and catechism, one lesson section at a time. Reminds you to do prayer, thanksgiving and praise, Bible memorization, and includes a complete music section with songs and hymns for worship. Each song can be played with or without the vocals. Another E64 feature is the competition mode, where you create a lesson plan and the program randomly selects question sets from the lessons to create a fun and exciting competition, which can be as small as the competition our family does every day in our daily family worship, to as large as the Southeast Bible competition we conducted with multiple rounds and prizes, including a new laptop computer and tickets to a major theme park. Another feature is Apples of Gold, a computerized parlor game for more advanced students, where two clue givers devise clues to help their teams come up with a phrase from the Bible. To schedule the homeschool advantage, to come to your church or homeschool conference, and teach your people how to use computer software to build strong biblical households, Contact Captain Brett at 678-570-2195 or email terabenth at inbox.com.